people, let's be real here. Dollar Tree has like the best selection of budget-friendly craft supplies. I mean, look at all these gems. But my favorite thing to DIY with are their wood palettes. For our first project, you're gonna need to pick up four of these and you're gonna need to grab some type of stick. I'm using candlesticks. You could use whatever works for you. You're gonna need to create like something for these palettes to sit on. These I picked up from Hobby Lobby for $3.99 and we're gonna need some words. I'm choosing hope. You'll need of course as many candlesticks and palettes as big as your word is. And people, a portion of this video is sponsored by June's Journey. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do for this little decor piece is figure out which way you want your palette to face. You can have it go in horizontally or vertically. They both look different and you can do different things with each design. So I wanted to share with you the different looks that these are giving me on top of these candlesticks, but I'm gonna go with this one right here. I've been painting palettes for years at this point and I've discovered there's two super easy ways to get in all those crevices. One, the technique we're gonna use here, which is some water with a little bit of antique Waverly wax and you could use paint as well if you don't wanna use the antique Waverly wax. And two, the spray paint. Now I'm trying to, you know, <laughs> not put stuff on my face because that little mask bothers me. And I am also trying to minimize the amount of chemicals I'm breathing in lately. So I haven't been using a lot of spray paint. So this is the way we're going to go. Now, usually I use this technique with a tin because it's bigger and I can submerge everything into the color, but I'm still lazy and <laughs> got any tin. So we're using a bowl and we're rolling on with it. But truth be told, if you go to use the tin, make sure that you still have the brush because you might need to take a little bit of extra color and just kind of smoosh it over to make the color a little bit more dominant. I really like the way the wood shows through with a light color, so it works wonderful for me, but just a little heads up. I'm keeping this project, well, really most of them in the video, pretty neutral, and I wanted to add something special to each piece to kind of make them pop, so I decided to give these candlesticks a little bit of an ombre effect and have the bottom of them darker than the top. And then on the sides of these palette pieces, I made them a little bit darker than I did the whole piece of the palette, just so we had some darker edges on our piece. Again, this is just something preference and honestly, probably no one is gonna notice it but me, but I just wanted to point that out to you. While this is drying, let me tell y'all about this awesome game I have been playing. This portion of the video is sponsored by June's Journey. I have been a gamer as long as I can remember and I especially love games if any kind of building is involved. As you're following June along on her journey, you're gonna get to experience the 1920s. You're gonna be given an estate that you can grow and decorate with different items, collect daily rewards every time you come back. And one of the funnest aspects of the game, you get to go into different maps and find hidden items. I love being able to claim rewards and then hopefully decorate my area with some of the rewards that I get because that's one of my favorite things whenever I'm playing any game. I like to decorate and build and expand out. This game is completely free to download. You can get it on iOS, Android, you can play it on Facebook, and you can even download it from Amazon on your laptop. And people, there is a link down in the description box for you to go ahead and download this game. So you can go ahead and join June on her journey as well. I decided that I wanted to paint the words white. And of course here I'm like, where did this stain come from on my clean napkin? <laughs> we're gonna use this multi-surface paint in satin and we're gonna give these two coats. Next, we're going to take the little wood slice that you see me put down for our O and of course, you know, I got a decoupage that sucker. Here's our pretty napkin we're gonna be using. I don't know why I decided to use this napkin. I kind of just wanted a bird on our O. <laughs> I don't know, it just made sense to me at the time. So our bird napkin piece pops out. I just painted it white and I just ripped out what bird made sense for me at the time. If you've never decoupaged or ripped apart a napkin before, you want to make sure you get the extra sneaky layers off so you just have that decorative top piece. It's gonna give you the best finish. Them extra layers are just gonna prevent that decorative layer from actually sticking properly. There are a few easy ways you can get them sneaky layers off. One of my favorites is just to rip and then it'll reveal the sneaky layers and I pull them off. You can take a little bit of Mod Podge between two fingers or a piece of painter's tape and put them at the edge of the napkin 
opposite of each other and pull them apart. For our medium, we're just using some good old Mod Podge and I'm just doing the whole entire piece real quickly, lightly, because I like to say less is more whenever we're doing some napkin decoupage. It's real thin, real easy to rip. And even with this, I got a little bit nervous because I kind of just went over the whole piece and it's kind of a big little section of the napkin. And there was a little spot that I wanted to show you. If you look up at the top of this round, you're going to notice that the napkin is bubbling a little bit. I had too much Mod Podge underneath this. That's why I kind of stress the less is more with the Mod Podge. Even on something tiny like this, it's super easy to have bubbles. I did not care for the way the letters laid on the palette. They didn't really pop out to me. So I decided to cut down a piece of burlap and then cut a little square for each section so that way I could just glue them down and it helped the letters kind of pop out. I did decide to fray around the edges. Some fabric would look really nice behind here as well. Give it a little bit of extra oomph. I'm taking some tacky glue to get that burlap to stick and I also use the tacky glue to get the wood letters to stick down on top. The burlap works out beautiful and I'm telling you it holds so good. It was really important for me to make sure that I was using glues that were going to give a long lasting hold because I do plan on selling these right in my vendor space. Wanted to make sure that they were gonna last and I always get a little nervous if I'm just using hot glue with things. But by all means, use whatever glue works best for you. I really like tacky glue with fabric and wood. And right here, I'm just popping a little bit of sealer on top of our round, you know, make sure that napkin don't come peeling up later. And I'm attaching that also with some tacky glue. I want to make sure that these candlesticks don't go moving anywhere. So I'm taking some of my favorite wood glue and applying one most of the surface area of the top of the candlestick and then a little smoosh of hot glue just to make sure that I get an immediate hold and these suckers don't go popping off because I'm such a pain in my booty when I am trying to use a long holding glue but I don't get like an instantaneous hold so hot glue does help provide that. Absolutely one of my favorite palette DIYs so far of this year. Let me know what you guys think. It's super simple palette DIY time. You're going to need just one of these in whatever color paint or, you know, stain you want. I'm using the same little mixture I did in the first project. And then as I'm letting that dry, I'm taking a little laser cut out with a permanent black marker. You could paint this if you want. I was being super lazy here and honestly, it gets the job done. So why not? And people don't be afraid to put a sealer over this just because it's permanent black marker doesn't mean you can't put a sealer over it. You absolutely can make that ish last a lot longer. Now we're gonna just take some tacky glue and stick this on down. Again, you can use a hot glue if you want. This is just staying in my house anyway. I'm just kind of giving you guys an idea for it. And I'm creating a little stand on the back here, finagling one. <laughs> There's all different types of ways you can make little stands. This is just an easy way to kind of get it to kick on a lean. And I use two little blocks from Dollar Tree and one tumbling block and it just works for whatever reason, just like this, take a screenshot. <laughs> in case you're like Brandy, I have no idea how to make that rehappen. Well, screenshot that and that's the best I got. <laughs> I just wiggle them together until it sits and for whatever reason, it be on the lean. So, you know, I roll on with it. And then pick some florals, put them together and glue them at the top here. Hi, my name is Brandy. I am florally challenged. <laughs> so I did the best I could with picking out what florals I thought would make sense there. And then I took some of Dollar Tree's transfers and rubbed one of the little same pieces on the back and then took a little wood piece and put one right on the front of the floral and attached it at the top. This is just something really cute. You could sit on a shelf somewhere. Mother's Day is coming up. You could make one of these and give to your mama just to kind of sit around. Something simple easy and really cute. For these sconces, you're going to need four palette pieces. These ones, the large ones. Okay. For these and some colors. This is what I decided to go with. I wanted to, you know, keep it neutral, but add a little bit of color because I really haven't done a little bit of color in something in quite some time. I pushed these palettes together just so that way it would 
kind of be a little bit uniformed as I was going about spreading the paint around. And there's really no right or wrong way to go about this. Just switch up your colors. Try not to overlap them unless you want to actually blend the pieces, but we're gonna dry brush over this. So I want each color to kind of pop through. If I blend it, they'll turn into a different color. So I want there to be like green, pink, and purple on here. I didn't want to have any mixtures. So I tried to make sure that they were each dry before I started the next color. I've used this technique many, many times. So feel free to add as many colors as you want on here. Once you get that dry brushing going, it's gonna blend everything in really, really well. I kind of cheated a little bit <laughs> and I brought in the heat gun instead of waiting for it to dry and it only took a couple seconds. Now we're gonna bring in the crusty bit paintbrush mug. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Did this deserve its own entrance? I don't know, let me know. This cute little mug that I actually designed, it's in my merch line and I have my crusty bit paintbrushes here, okay? And for all you in my comments that wanna know why I don't just wash the brushes, why do I have so many crusty paintbrushes, listen, Life happens, okay? I The paintbrushes are everywhere. I go from one room to the next. I got kids, I got the business, I got the house things. Listen, I am lucky. I even know that I have these crusty bit paintbrushes and they didn't fall into the abyss of craft supplies. I don't know where they're at that I hid from myself somewhere. Okay, let's move on. Stop being so judgy. But people, here's why it's so great to know where your crusty bit paintbrushes are because you can just dab them crusty edges and a little bit of paint, it doesn't matter what color, and then swoosh 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 across your surface i've used this on canvases before as you can see here it works wonderful on wood and you just dry brush it's super easy and in a couple seconds you're all done and have a gorgeous finish once these are all dry you're going to need to bring in the miter shears that's right we're going to need to cut these suckers in half to create our sconces there's a bunch of ways you could do this just in case you have grip strength issues you can wrap a towel around the edges of these miter shears. It's going to help you squeeze it a little bit better. Or you can take a pot holder and wrap around the edge of these little miter shears. It's going to help you squeeze them tight as well. I struggle with hand strength myself. So these are little tricks I use when I have to cut things and I struggle at times with the miter shears. Next, we're gonna need to cut down four paint sticks to glue to our palettes. Side note, <laughs> I went to grab the wood glue and I didn't have a lid on it. <laughs> so I'm searching around the space. <laughs> oh, I don't even want to know how long that wood glue was sitting there without the lid because it took me two days to film the project. So for all I know, <laughs> I don't even listen. Okay, next. <laughs> I cut down the paint sticks and use another paint stick to keep it even and mark that paint stick so this way I made sure that I placed the paint sticks in the same exact spot as the first one and then I attached a little bit or put a little bit of wood glue and hot glue on the back of these for instant hold and a long hold and then just spaced them out to what I felt made sense for the sconces and i do want to say that i think if these were a solid black or a solid white they would look really high-end looking the colors kind of keeping that from happening but i really wanted to just do something different here today these are some little pieces i picked up from hobby lobby to create our hanger and now we're going to need to bring in our drill with our little drill bin here so we can dangerously <laughs> put a hole in the top of these suckers. I'm using a half drill bit, a half inch drill bit. I'm not sure how else I'm supposed to say this, spade, you know, and there is no easy way to go about this. So viewer beware, <laughs> attempt putting a hole in that sucker at your own risk, okay? You can grab all kinds of different hangers from the store. Ones that have little screws, you could just screw one here. You could glue different ones. I was just on a mission to use these ones that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I literally picked them up for this project. And then I realized that they were too long. So I had to chomp at them <laughs> with the miter shears and just kind of shave them down. So that way they didn't protrude out so far from the back. 
And to get these to attach, I took some wood glue on the front. And as I pressed them through, I took hot glue on the back to hold them into place overnight and added a little hanger. For all the trouble, <laughs> these turned out really cute. I do think if you want a high end finish, do a solid color with the same exact concept. These would turn out super, super nice. As always, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today, people. I hope you enjoyed these Dollar Tree palette DIYs. And until next time, bye!